Have you seen the endless announcements about organizations being breached and you find yourself trying to figure out what you should do to not end up on the news like these organizations? Hi, I'm William, and today we're going to talk about a relatively new security architecture that a lot of people are really excited about, Zero Trust. Before we get into today's topic, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you're notified when we release future videos. Okay, let's put five minutes up on the clock and let's get started talking about zero trust and the zero trust architecture. So there's a real problem with how organizations have traditionally designed security systems. We sometimes refer to it as the candy bar effect. The security has a hard shell and a soft inside. Once an attacker breaks through the perimeter or the shell, they can pivot pretty effortlessly. Part of the problem is that cloud solutions and SaaS, or software as a service, has completely changed the way our IT infrastructure is built. You can't just automatically trust the devices that are inside of your network anymore. So Zero Trust is a new model for designing and thinking about security architecture. Simply put, nothing is trusted until it can prove its trustworthiness. And at the same time, we bring the security perimeter as close to the individual devices and the services as possible treating every device like it's facing the internet. This is done with micro-segmentation gateways. So here are a few of the broader zero trust principles that you should understand so that you can follow along with the finer details. Number one, there is no longer any such thing as inside the network. Here's a simple way to think about it. Act like every device is at a coffee shop. Number two, trust nothing and verify everything. You have to assume that your network has been breached and you want to contain the attackers. Everything must prove its trustworthiness. Number three, security will need to adapt in real time. Security policies must be dynamic so that they can change based on insight from data sources. For an example, should a device become compromised, the policies that allow it to communicate with other devices, they should dynamically change and isolate that device. Now let's talk about some of the finer zero trust principles. First, is sort of what we mentioned about trusting nothing and verifying everything. To do this, we have to do a few things. We need to always identify by using a single authentication source, something like single sign-on. Then we want to have the object prove its authorization with multi-factor authentication, a second step. And next, we want to control access using least privileged principles. Only give access to the minimum needed for an individual to do their job and nothing more. We also want to record and log all activities so that we can catch malicious activity early. The next big concept in Zero Trust is micro-segmentation or micro-perimeters. IT infrastructure must be segmented and isolated as much as possible and as much as makes sense. So for example, the marketing team, do they need to access the HR department files on the file share? Most likely not. So set rules, access control rules, different servers, etc., that enforce this. On a similar note, if you have an HR teams in different countries, they most likely don't need to access each other's files. Micro-segmentation can come in many ways, be it access control list, share permissions, VLANs, network segments, application proxies, etc. So that's a 30,000 foot view of zero trust. Now let's talk briefly about the process that organizations should take when they decide to move towards a zero trust architecture. The first thing that you have to do when you begin implementing zero trust is to define your resources and the surface that you want to secure. You need to know exactly what apps, software, file shares, services, etc. are deployed in your environment. This will tell you what you have and what needs to be secured within your environment. The next phase is you need to begin mapping the pathways or the process flows and the behaviors that are permissible, like the computer and HR department that will access a certain file share, for example or the software development team who will maybe possibly use PowerShell commands um, against certain servers or against other computers. And be sure not to forget about the administrative pathways, things like admins who need to RDP to certain servers or RDP to certain desktops. Then once you know what's on your network and who or what accesses or uses what within your environment, then you can begin designing and creating the policies and the rules to enforce them. So you may add a policy to one of your micro-segmentation gateways to block secretaries from running PowerShell commands against other devices. As that's just an example. And then the final phase is continuous monitoring of the perimeter or your micro-perimeters now because you want to watch for indicators of misuse or compromise or for attackers attempting to do something. Remember earlier we said that one of the big changes with zero trust is that we assume the attacker is inside the network. So to recap, 
Zero trust is an architecture as much as it is a philosophy. It's really a new way of looking at our networks. We never trust, we always verify, and we assume that the attacker is within our environment. This means that we bring the perimeter, or the edge, as close to the device as possible with micro-segmentation gateways and security policies. If you need help with the cybersecurity at your small or medium business, feel free to contact us at the link in the description. We'll see you next Friday.